Hi, and welcome to this week's lectures on resolving conflict and managing difficult employees. Leaders within organizations are responsible for creating a work environment that enables people to thrive. If turf wars, disagreements, and differences of opinion escalate into interpersonal conflict, you must intervene immediately. Not intervening is not an option if you value your organization and your positive culture. In conflict-ridden situations, your mediation skill and interventions are critical. Don't, don't avoid the conflict hoping that it will go away. Trust me, it won't. Even if the conflict appears to have been superficially put to rest, it will rear its ugly head whenever stress increases or a new disagreement occurs. An unresolved conflict or interpersonal disagreement festers just under the surface in your work environment. It burbles to the surface whenever enabled and always at the worst possible moment. This too shall pass is not ever an option. Don't meet separately with people in conflict. If you allow each person to tell their story to you, you risk polarizing their positions. The person in conflict has a vested interest in making himself or herself right if you place yourself in the position of judge and jury. The sole goal of the employee in this situation is to convince you of the merits of their case. Don't believe for even a moment that the only people who are affected by the conflict are the participants. Everyone in your office and every employee with whom the conflicting employees interact is affected by the stress. People feel as if they're walking on eggshells in the presence of the antagonist. This contributes to the creation of a hostile work environment for other employees. In worst case scenarios, your organization members take sides and your organization is divided. I'm going to list the steps for conflict resolution mediation. First, meet with the antagonist together. Let each person briefly summarize their point of view without comment or interruption by the other party. This should be a short discussion so that all parties are clear about the disagreement and conflicting views. Intervene if either employee attacks the other employee. That's not acceptable. Then ask each participant to describe specific actions they'd like to see the other party take that would resolve the differences. Three or four suggestions work well. An example like, um, I'd like Mary to send the report to me by Thursday at 1 p.m. so I can complete my assignment by my due date on Friday. Another example is, I would like to have responsibility for all of the business development and follow up with that client. The way the work divi is divided now causes Tom and I to never know what the other person's doing. Those are specific ways to solve a problem that the employees are offering. Sometimes, as in the second example that I gave, um, as the supervisor, you must own some of the responsibilities for helping the employees resolve the conflict. Always ask, what about the work situation is causing the staff members to fail? If the situation needs further exploration, use a process that was adapted from Stephen Covey in which you ask each participant to additionally identify what the other employee can do more of, less of, or stop and start. All participants discuss and commit to making the changes necessary to resolve the conflict. Commit to noticing that the other person has made a change no matter how small. Commit to treating each, other, each person with dignity and respect. It's okay to have reasonable disagreements over issues and plans. It's never okay to have personality conflicts that affect the workplace. Let the antagonist know that you will not choose sides, that it is impossible for a person external to the conflict to know the truth of the matter. You expect the individuals to resolve the conflicts, re resolve the conflicts like adults. If they're unwilling to do so, you'll be forced to take disciplinary action that can lead to the dismissal of both parties. Finally, assure both people that you will have every faith in their ability to, to resolve the differences and get on with their successful contributions within your organization, and then set a time with them to review their progress. Mediating a conflict is challenging, but as a manager or supervisor, the role of mediator comes with your territory. You simply have to do it. Your willingness to appropriately intervene sets the stage for your own success. You craft a work environment that enables the success of the people who work there. Conflict mediation is, an, is really an example of practice makes perfect. Now we're going to talk about um, employees that have problems and problem, and problem employees. So when is an employee a problem? 
supervisors should look for three prerequisites. First, the employee's problem must persist. Second, job performance must be affected. Third, a pattern must be developed. When you simply have an employee with a problem, it's important to avoid cynicism. Um, so it's just really important to remember that there are employees that have problems and then there are problem employees. And these are very, very different um, issues. I'm going to list some suggestions that may help you avoid the jaded view towards employees that sometimes comes from the cynicism that affects managers. Realize that all employees, including yourself, will have problems at one time or another. Employee problems are normal, natural, and human. Problems may interfere temporarily with the job. Deal with problems matter-of-factly and in a supportive manner. At the same time, be clear about performance expectations. Apply the three prerequisites before labeling a person a problem employee. Maintain a positive attitude towards employees in general. Look for exciting acts of service to the customer, innovative employee ideas, and acts of spontaneous cooperation. Build employee self-esteem, build employee self-esteem by emphasizing achievements rather than problems. Now, instead of having an employee with a problem, you have a problem employee or a deadbeat employee, you've got a tough problem on your hands. A problem employee is a supervisor's worst nightmare, and you know the employee I'm talking about. He doesn't show up for work, he calls in sick all the time, he milks the time off policy, he's always walking on the edge, but never falling off. He makes coworkers pick up his slack, talks bad about the company, he walks the edge of the work policies and processes. He knows how to work the system. He does just enough to stay employed, but doesn't grow professionally and doesn't contribute like your other employees. He sometimes reaches his goals, but exhibits a general lack of enthusiasm. The hallmark of the problem employee is that he is always walking on the edge between succeeding and failing. Some problem employees actively criticize the company and its policies, not through suggested routes, but an email at the water cooler and the employee lunchroom. Others are constantly unhappy with whatever policy or the direction or direction the company sets. Their unhappiness runs all over their coworkers as they complain, gossip, and criticize. Whatever form of behavior your problem employee exhibits, it won't go away without your intervention. Bad habits, like good habits, become ingrained in workplace behavior.